I think the only other thing, though, that I want to watch today is uh, this video. Uh, this, These are important for everybody to see. Uh, four, four performance improvements coming in 2024. Um, and, yeah, this is one of the things that 2024, I think, well, hopefully is... Um, hopefully gets in. I mean, I think outside of my usual arguments of like, hey, we need progression. Hey, we need more, you know, meaningful gameplay. We also need better performance. So 10 pound 42 is the man when it comes to that. Let me link, actually link the video right away to you guys. Um, and this is uh, some of the performance updates that are or should be coming. In As we start the new year, what are the performance improvements we might see in Star Citizen in 2024? The big one is probably going to be newer components, but we'll come on to that in a minute. Let's start with the first one, Vulcan. Vulcan has <laughs> been in components. development for a long time now for Star Citizen. It is going to effectively replace DX11 as the graphics API. Now, in some games, Vulcan can bring performance improvements. They're not massive though, and so the community, I think, has been hoping that Vulcan was going to make a massive difference to Star Citizen performance overall, but... I, I don't think we've been hoping. It's They've kind of sold that to us, I believe. At least that's how I felt. I think we'll have to wait and see. It is a lower-level graphics API, which means the developers will be able to get more into the weeds, do more tweaking, and effectively set things up, rather than DX11, which is more of a just a slap it on and, and off you go. So... Depending on what CRG do with this, we may see more performance. Who knows? They did say at one point... Wow, that really worries me, actually. Um, Like, a lot. Because, <laughs> like, we're not getting good performance right now at all. and uh, or, or acceptable performance. But I think we all accept it because of the, the state the game's in. And because they tell us that this thing is coming. So that they will give us more graphics options when this comes in. And so there's potentially a chance that we'll be able to actually tweak the graphics ourselves meaningfully because at the moment, other than the clouds, a lot of the graphics settings don't really meaningfully change performance. The big okay. thing with Vulcan though is that it actually opens up more technologies that might make performance worse. So we have... Uh, okay, so they're only... So really they've only been selling us on how it looks? I thought every time they said, but this is more performant, but this is more performant, but this is more performant. They would always say that. The ability to do ray tracing with Vulcan. So that won't necessarily come this year. I'm not sure it will, but that will actually probably hurt performance. But the next thing we're going to talk about then allows you to go back up probably to where you were. Upscaling. For a while, you've been able to sort of kind of mash upscaling into Star Citizen and, and use some technologies to get it going. But Star Citizen this year should have in game, in built, DLSS, FSR, and Star Citizen's own version, CIG's own upscaling technology. So, if you're not. That's the biggest performance thing. Yeah. This is how everybody gets performance in games now, right? Not familiar. This technology basically takes, uh, say, a 1080p scene and it upscales it to 1440p, but you get the performance as if the game is running at 1080p. Very good technology. They are all slightly different. Typically, NVIDIA's DLSS 2, which is what CRG is going to be implementing, has been kind of seen as the gold standard, but okay. AMD's thing is pretty good as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what they look from a visual standpoint. I don't know why they're How well they compare own. to each other, but also how much performance can you get? Now, the key thing with this is that you can't gain performance when you're CPU bound, which for most of us, that is the big issue in Star Citizen. The yeah. CPU slash RAM slash engine is getting in the way. You're normally blocked by a couple of threads. You're, you're running up against some sort of limit where the CPU just can't get through the web fast enough. But for those of you who want to play at something like 4K, more mid-range cards will probably be able to cope better with you have to be GPU bound to gain anything with DLSS and FSR. But isn't that the point of Vulkan is to take a lot more of the load off of or the Gen 12 renderer or whatever? There was something that was supposed to take a lot of the problems uh, with the CPU bound issues and bringing a lot of things over to the GPU, right? That's one thing that they've talked about for many, many years now was doing a lot more of, of that work. Kind of high resolution. So... We'll see how that goes. I'm anticipating something like a 3080 should be able to be working with DLSS at 4K and be fairly playable, whereas at the moment it's not 
really great. Let's now look at something that isn't client side performance, but actually the server. Let's talk about server meshing, a big piece of technology that CIG are aiming to get in the game. Let's just say this year, because they've said they're aiming for the summer. Let's just hope they get it in by the end of the year. <laughs> the big problem with the game in its current state is that things that are reliant on server FPS don't work very well. So things like the AI that need to be updated by the server are really struggling. So often you got the server FPS number and often is really, really low. Ideally, I think we're aiming for a 30 FPS server refresh or update, yep. but at the moment we're, we're sometimes- and, and they, there was some weird conversation that like never, nothing ever came of it. It was uh, mentioned very casually, everyone got super hyped and then nothing happened was that in uh, not that this would happen in the actual uh, PU, but in Arena Commander, they were talking about 120 FPS servers, something like that, to see what it would do. It was down then... under five. So things just don't work very well. Now, I think it's questionable whether actually the first implementation of server meshing will do anything to this server side performance, because the theory goes that the first implementation of server meshing, static server meshing, will just be two servers talking to each other and it will be the Stanton server talking to the Pyro server. It will be passed between them, but in theory, there's still going to be 100 players on the Stanton server and 100 players on... Do we know that? I certainly hope that's not the uh, the way it works, personally. I hope we I hope they split it up between the, the planets. That's my hope. The Pyro server. So we do know that. Okay. I think it's questionable whether know why this that, uh, year we're going to see head. actual server side improvement. I think we don't know really what the implication of the replication layer is. We don't know whether that's my most important thing. I think is replication layer and 30k is not breaking your your play session completely. The the way that they've restructured how the servers work will do anything to server FPS. It's really hard to tell from the replication layer testing that's been going on. So. I am very unsure whether this actually is going to do anything for performance. I, I don't think it will do anything for client-side performance. I don't see how that would be the case. Maybe we, maybe entity counts. I don't know. But I think from a server-side performance, I think still, well, it might help I wouldn't hold count. your breath that 2024 is going to bring a really snappy, responsive AI servers doing everything they should, I think. Because isn't that entity over there not being counted on this server? Sort of, but it is, I don't know. Maybe that will be for a while down the track when we've got more dynamic server meshing going on where we've got more servers and maybe they've got less players on them. Now, the big one for client-side performance this year is actually... I've had 10-hour play sessions with no interruptions since the last major patch. Congratulations, but that's not how every patch is. So the, the need for that improvement of, uh, you know, when a server crashes, your whole life you know you you end up at another station that you're nowhere near all that stuff is is being over will be really nice not going to be really anything to do the game itself it's going to be new parts new components the boring stuff first nvidia are releasing super gpus it's just a refresh of the 4000 series that we've got now that isn't particularly interesting again often it's the cpu in the way not the gpu but yeah those gpus will be slightly faster so there you go the real interesting stuff will be the CPUs. I think we are expecting the 8000 series from AMD this year. So Ryzen on the AM5 platform, same motherboards that you've got already. If you've got a 7800X 3D, in theory, we're going to see 8000 series potential upgrade paths. It will be interesting to see whether we get X3D uh, chips straight away, the chips with the V cache, which Star Citizen really seems to like, but it's going to be fascinating, really. There could be some really decent bumps in performance by just upgrading your CPU. Now, obviously, just is an interesting word. These things... I've certainly gotten that uh, when I upgraded to the uh, 5900 or 5800X 3D. It was a huge bump. It will cost a lot of money, but if you're wanting the best performance of Star Citizen, as I've been saying on this channel for, what, three years now, you're going to want the best CPU. So... I imagine it's quite a few of us will end up jumping to the 8000 series from AMD. On the Intel side, I think we are also potentially going to see the 15th gen Intel CPUs. Now, the 14th gen, I haven't even bothered. That, that's like, these are the best for gaming, right? But then uh, Star Citizen isn't a game, so the X3D chips work better, Testing, I guess. They're effectively the 13th gen with the 
a different different box. There's some very, very minor changes. So they're not that interesting. But in theory, again, the 15th gen from Intel should be a bit more of a jump. And also that will be on a new motherboard and therefore there will be at least one generation of upgrading on there. So No, like every time the new Intel one comes out, it's it's always like the, the best chip for gaming. Um, but the X3D does much better in a game like Star Citizen because of that V-Cache, like you okay. said. I'm just making a joke. In theory, but, they'll yeah. be interesting as well. I'll, I'll test those as well when they come out. So, I mean, that's quite boring to say the, how to get better performance in Star Citizen, buy more yeah. parts, buy better parts. But that is realistically the way this thing works. And so I'm I'm really bummed out by this video. I was thinking that the result, I, he was going to tell me about all the cool performance updates we're going to get in 2024 that CIG is doing. And he just let down literally everything. And, and that's... And this is his thing, right? If you want to know how to get better performance in Star Citizen, he does all the testing with certain chips and things like that. Um, this is the guy I go to. And it's um, it's really sad to see that, that this may not be as good as I thought it so, would be. I think I'm pretty excited to see what I can test over this year. But overall, this year should bring some performance improvements. If we get Vulkan and DLSS and upscaling stuff, they should help some people in certain scenarios where you are GPU bound. We should see some improvement from those two. And then, yeah, hopefully we're going to see some juicy upgrade options this year from AMD and Intel. Oof. Okay. Sylvan posted about performance on Spectrum and then he warned everyone about performance. It's a long road ahead. Well, if it's a long road ahead, then our, like, technically our, like, like he's saying, our tech improves and then it's the tech that's doing it i don't know but i just i was really hoping that some of these renderer things that they put in front of us as like these are some of the things that are going to help us um is is a, a problem you know this is a good question is the road behind us long or short because that's terrifying both I think it's long, but the road ahead of us is even longer, you know? So. Slowly the game's getting more performance. It definitely has been, but I wonder if those big performance jumps have already happened. And I, I, I don't know. What he touches on about server performance is probably the more important thing than anything. Um, and I think we hope to see that but I don't think we're going to see it next year, right? It's a server meshing thing. And how many of you believe it's actually going to be in? I don't know, man. I don't think we get it. It would be a dream if we did, but I don't think we are.